what I noticed was I really enjoyed this is the theory, but also what tool language you use to implement them and what's going into those kind of fine tuning modeling decisions. And I actually like that more so than how we take the results and implement them in an actual real application. Thanks for being here today. Uh, so I'm very excited about this topic, actual science and versus data science. Uh, and so first of all, can you please introduce yourself to our audiences? Thanks a lot for having me today, V. Um, like V said, uh, my name is Ravan, and I am a data scientist at a top four life insurer in Canada. And I am one of the most passionate people you'll find about data science and how it can be used to revolutionize businesses. And I think more importantly, how you can use it in your day-to-day -day life to make things that you're interested in bring value to you. Um, we'll get into a little bit of like my background, um, but I did start off more in the traditional actuarial route. And if you step back even a little bit further, I actually spent about half a day as a kinesiology student at Western. Um, though it was not a, a long stint, I wanted to one day be a doctor, saw the coursework and immediately realized that's not for me. Um, I quickly realized that life of math and computers was more, more on my speed. Mm -hmm. Great. So what made you decide to like pursue the actual profession after you were thinking about become uh, a doctor and then switch into uh, the data science to become a data scientist? Yeah, so I actually first heard about actuarial science when I was in high school. I had a physics teacher say, oh, you like math, you're good at it, you could do actuarial science. And that was very, it was very passive. I didn't think twice about actuarial science until the day I went to Western to pick my courses for kinesiology. There was an orientation event where all of us showed up a week before classes and we sat down in the computer lab and we had to pick our courses. And like I said, I was like, these courses are not for me. Um, and I remember I'm like, oh, somebody said something about actuarial science being good about math. I'm like, I love math. Let's do it. So I stood up. I said, can I please switch into actuarial science? And the proctor said, sure. But what is actuarial science? And I said, I'm not sure, but I'll find out. Um, now it's a slightly Hollywood drama, uh, dramatized version of it. But I made a quick whim to, to love the, the stats um, and also how actuarial science brought in the kind of the financial side of it and the statistical side, which aligned with my interest at the time I got into investing. And I was like, this is really on my skill set, um, more of an applied math. Um, what I quickly learned, as you know, throughout the actuarial process, you're writing your exams, do your accreditation. Um, and there's a few exams that I wrote that really stuck out to me, um, mostly the, the probability exam, the financial modeling exam and the short-term liability exam, where you're taking statistical models and really bringing them into a risk um, environment. And what I noticed was I really enjoyed the statistical theory, but also what tooling would you use to implement them and what's going into those kind of fine-tuning modeling decisions. And I actually like that more so than how we take the results and implement them in an actuarial application. Um, so for me, I was like, oh, how do we actually leverage these new tools I like and how do you actually implement some of the stats? And the answer was R. So I remember as I was going through my exams, I started picking up R as like a side hobby. And this is before I learned about Tidyverse and Dplyr and all the awesome um, R suite of packages. And this was back in the day of base R and I'm aging myself here. Um, but I remember I picked it up and immediately put it back down. I used to do like at my lunch hours after work, I do like Coursera courses and data camp. I was like, I, base R is too terrible. I will just use Excel. So I ended up getting and becoming a VBA wizard throughout my co-ops in my first few years of working as an associate. Um, but again, there were some limitations in Excel and how far VBA can really push it. And that led me to pick up a book again and say, okay, time to get back on the R train. And that's when I found out of the tidyverse and the data science approach to leveraging R and Python. Um, and it completely flipped my world upside down. All of a sudden, I had, every day I had two manuals. I had a Python and an R manual on my, on my desk. And every day, more and more, I was focused on what is in these books. And I was so excited. So basically the day after I got my actuarial designation, I applied for a master's uh, to do data science, which was, seems counterintuitive to finish a few years of studying intensely and then immediately rolling back in and doing it again. Um, but that really is what pushed me on my journey is really enjoying the mechanisms behind some of the actuarial work we do. And then how can we introduce, implement those into to our day to day? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say like I'm doing my second master in computer and IT and like some of the foundation courses is about like the theory, the foundation, the principle behind the things underlying the computer science, right? So I can I can understand and resonate with you is like everything is like is, is much more fascinating when you learn more about the topic going to the detail and not just like on the surface learning how to code it and, and so on. 
A hundred percent. And I don't know about you, but every day I learn a little bit more. I feel more and more less capable of being able to do my job because there's just so much more out there. It's it's overwhelming. I think that's kind of what we see. And I think anyone that likes the data space, you're constantly looking at new technologies and finding new ways to leverage it in your day to day. And it's absolutely fascinating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I can see that, like, let's say if we describe like extra science, combine more of the mathematics, statistic with the business financial, and then the data science is like having those two, but add on more of the computer science, like the exactly. application technical, like more stronger in that. Uh, so can you, with your work uh, in like as data science in the company, can you describe the role of data scientists in an insurance company a little bit more? Yep. So it's actually a fairly generalized term saying what does a data scientist look like in a company? Because it really depends on the arm. Um, for for uh, major insurance companies, you typically have siloed teams. Um, and in there, you could be working on pricing element. You could be working on some valuation work, some of the liabilities that insurers are taking. You can have some more marketing driven analytics. But typically, when you're on these teams, you're working with a smaller cross functional unit. So that's what I love about data science is you're working on a smaller team but you have to work with people on the tech team. So typically you need to, as a data scientist, you worry about things from where does your data land? How do you actually generate your data to how do you get this data presented in front of you so you can work with it? Does the data make sense? Then finally, it's like working with your line of businesses and saying, you almost work like a little consultant within your team saying, how can we actually leverage data science, machine learning, AI to bring value here? Because that's kind of the coolest aspect. And you really do need to be a little bit entrepreneurial as a data scientist. Um, in that you can't expect people that have never heard about ML or AI to know how it can be used. It's a more abstract thought term. So you really have to be the one to self-advocate for how can you use it. So it really encourages you to like understand your business and like propose really cool solutions. Mm -hmm. So from that sense, it's like, how is it different than your previous actuarial roles? Yeah, so the actuarial role, so you actually had similar silos of your operating of. You can be a pricing forward data scientist, you can be a pricing forward actuary. Um, the big difference here that I felt was with the data science team, you're really working with a cross-functional tech team. So if you really enjoy the technical data movement, software implementations, how would you deploy different models, you, you get to kind of have a broader scope of people you're working with. In the actuarial stream, you're working more concentrated on your team and your models typically don't need to be supported by a lot of other departments. You typically work with just in the actuarial circle, which isn't to say it's not broad. It's just less broad in the tech space. So typically you're working with, if you're pricing, you're working with your reinsurers, you're working with your um, kind of valuation teams. So there still is a bit of a, a networking relationship between teams, but I felt it was much more contained within your line of business. Okay, so I would say in, in that same, let's say if we're talking about pricing work, so the data science, uh, like scientists wrong, more working with the data, working with tech to getting those data and then helping to provide any insight, which can help the actual team to make the judgment call on exactly. assumptions and stuff into the pricing work. Yep, even some work that we do actually gets embedded as we, we do some analytics work. I won't get too much in the details, but we actually use that as input into actuarial models. So that's where kind of the full circle comes back to where I started as the actuary. Now I understand where I can use data science and actuarial work. Now I just use a different, slightly different tool set than actuaries might be used to and feed that into kind of more traditional models. Mm. So it's yeah. very neat to see behind the curtains. Yeah, for sure. In my opinion, like in the future, I think these two feel eventually going to converge to each other oh, because like, we share a lot of the trans, like overlap transfer skill and analytical and stuff. And in the future, I, I would expect that uh, the actuaries like, need to develop uh, the technical skill set further with the advancement of technology and everything. Yeah, especially as we keep growing data. I can't remember if there's a, a staggering stat at how much data we're producing year over year. And as our in-force or individual data for collecting on people is increasing, actuaries need to be able to, to leverage that data and, and integrate into their workflow. So I do agree. Convergence is uh, not probably going to happen. It's necessity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's also where the, uh, the direction of the society of actuaries with like more exam and courses yeah. in analytics and data modeling and so on. Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, you have to be you really have to self-advocate if you really enjoy it, because you can't expect everyone to know how ML is going to be used. Hopefully in a future state, it's going to be more commonplace. But for now, really thinking about how can you make value, what do you see is wrong, identifying as kind of bottlenecks in your day-to-day. -day. You can actually architect solutions and, and make a huge difference.
Mm -hmm. And I, I would say that like in, in real life, in real work, uh, it's really like if we get the information and the knowledge from our own studying and stuff, and if we can, uh, I think we will be the one that can come up with ideas at work. And if we can uh, convince other people to apply that for work, that will be like a, a very uh, big win for the company or the team and even for yourself. Yeah. A hundred percent. Like I, you really talked about, well, you almost look like actuarial science is being, or data science is being a bit of a Venn diagram. I really like to look that one circle might be your computer science. One might be your statistics. And find that domain expertise kind of come from the app. How would you take yeah. some of the risk models and implement them into life insurance applications? That's kind of where that third Venn diagram comes. And a cool thing, if you want to be an actuarial data scientist, you're kind of at the intersection. You understand that. You understand the stats. You understand uh, your technologies. And that kind of makes you a huge asset. Um, and do you talk about, too, like, what is the core differences between the actuarial work and the data science work? The work is highly similar. Like, I've spent how many times, and you and I have both done this, you're looking at SQL tables. You're looking at like, how can this person be 140? This doesn't make sense. Like cleaning data is, is rampant everywhere. It's just the tools that you're using to do so kind of migrate from the Microsoft suite into something a little bit more powerful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. So in that sense, given that like right now, there's still two separate uh, field, actual science and data science. So what is your advice for a student who like consider whether they should pursue the actual path or the data science path? Mm -hmm. I think that you don't have to pick one up the, at the gate. Like I was one example where I started actuarial, found a love for data, and now I kind of harmonize them together. Um, it go the first and foremost should be going where you're most interested in currently. Um, if you really enjoy the more of computer science and like building kind of applications from the ground up or building decisioning models, things like that, data science is a great option. But another really great option is developing this domain expertise in actuarial science, understanding that you're going to get exposure to some of the data science techniques. You're going to learn a little bit about prob probability theory and financial economics, things like that. Knowing that if you're interested in that, you can always supplement as you find opportunities to improve. You can kind of self-learn some of the data science components. So I think you really have to say is like, do am I more interested in the kind of the application of the stats in the actuarial space and will I be okay to learn the, the technical computer stuff on my own? Or do I really want to be absorbed by the technical and computer science aspects and slowly supplement maybe through work experience or some side elective courses to try and understand how you can apply it to an industry? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. And I, I guess it's like if, if one wants to go with the actual science first, like his aims is uh, the formal path, <laughs> you know, a challenging path that one should pursue. But then like later on, just like my case, I will pick up like the technical skills through my master in computer and IT or like just through all the Coursera and stuff. Yeah, so I think both are valid paths. But as you say, at the end of the day, it will be like depend on your passion, what your interest mm -hmm. like. And, yeah. and you never know until you try something and then you figure out, oh, maybe this is not exactly what I want. And you try the next thing and the next thing is up. A hundred percent. Like I, I almost imagine a world where data science was available in an undergraduate degree when I went to school. I don't know if I would have enjoyed data science had I started in data science. I didn't like our, like I enjoyed the statistical application, but it seemed so abstract when I was doing it initially, right? When you don't really have an understanding of a use case in the real world where you're applying it. That's usually the biggest problem where you say like, oh, university feels so technical. How do you apply it? When I kind of went the actuarial route and I understood the problems that we face and all of a sudden now you're like, oh, here's a toolbox that you can use. I really enjoy it. Like I loved under learning it that way knowing that like, here's a problem. Here are some ways I can learn to, to fix it. Um, so if you enjoy understanding your a subject area first, there's no reason you can't find data science um, down the road and just be aware and have it on the radar as a, a toolbox that you can have available. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So last question, how would you uh, how would you suge suggest for someone to develop the skill for data science? Yeah, so the best thing about learning data science is it's applicable in every aspect of your life. Um, so the first thing I'd recommend, like I personally, I've done the online courses through the data camp CU to me, and they work, they get the, the core parts across. And if you like learning that way, they're, they're a great option because it's very structured. Uh, but for me, I find I really like to have a problem that I'm worried about and try and look for tool, new tools. So I really love learning on like Kaggle competitions. So Kaggle is a data science competition website. They post different types of data sets. They post cool coding competition problems. Um, but what's even better than the problems they post is the community of people contributing to uh, the, like the education of everyone partaking in these competitions. Um, a really famous one um, and that kind of got me started on this competition route 
was you had to build a model to predict who would likely have uh, survived the Titanic. So if you were to go back, you bought a ticket to the Titanic. When you bought that ticket, how likely were you to die? And I thought that was so interesting. And maybe the model is phrased more, who would survive? <laughs> um, more and more optimistic view. But you're building some basic data science models um, to say, okay, what is the decision tree? How would the decision tree be used to, to figure out who would survive, who would die? Logistic uh, regression, how would you use a statistical approach, things like that. And then you have these people who have Kaggle grandmasters who have really perfected the data science competition and leveraging ML models. They're out there posting examples of how they've approached the problem with their perspective. Um, and I think that that's the coolest way to learn is seeing like a problem, understanding it, and seeing how other people would also approach it and then collaborating back and forth. Um, mm -hmm. Another great aspect is if you're into certain types of data, like for example, myself, I love uh, basketball, golf, um, and things like blockchain. And for me, I enjoy working with kind of people in blockchain applications where um, the data is all available. So I have a team of people where we build uh, data science models and blockchain to try and figure out when there's price um, like arbitrage, things like that. Um, so if you if you like it, there's data, you can you can learn all you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, excellent uh, advices, because I would say that like those actually give you real life and practical experiences mm -hmm. and perhaps will be more valuable on the resume rather than just like taking courses as well. And I can say that like even like for my master, they also suggest uh, introduce like different competitions or uh, something yeah. that you know although I'm uh, too uh, lazy <laughs> to, to do it myself. And they take a lot of time, but they're a lot of fun. Even other things too, like the one thing I'm learning more and more is that a data scientist, again, is one piece of the whole puzzle. Like you have to worry about data flowing from where do you, where does the data land in a database? You have to understand database technologies. Then you have to understand the modeling. Then you have to understand how you actually deploy the model. And then, and then all of a sudden you start to migrate to more of a software engineer capacity. So we talked about like data science, you're an ever, ever long, a long learner. Um, same with actuaries, like the, like your mental endurance yeah. is very similar between the two. Um, it's just where you're focusing that time, but you have to, be kind of a master of uh, a jack of all trades, almost not necessarily a master of none, but definitely jack of all trades if you're going to pursue the data science route. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here today and share on your insight experiences in both the actual science and data science view. Like I'm sure our viewers will find this very helpful. Awesome. I'm glad to help. And if anyone has questions, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I'm more than happy to talk your ears off about data.